I'm building my first camp van. Now I have a vehicle, I need to sort the floor. In the first episode, I touched on the fact that I'm wanting to build a camper so I can go out on trips with the family. I decided upon the Hyundai i800 eight-seater style from 2010, mainly because a lot of the interior work had been done. Headlining, rear heating, aircon, and rear windows saving me a lot of time over converting a typical van. The camper will allow me to get to locations further from home to photograph for my own hobby too. But before I can start dreaming of misty mornings or epic sunrises, I need to sort somewhere to sleep and before that I need a floor. Having watched numerous YouTube videos, I decided to remove the seats, carpet and seat runners, revealing the metal flooring. I selected 18mm by 34mm wooden battens and stuck them down with grub adhesive to the ridges of the floor. This 18mm allowed me to raise the floor just high enough for some underfloor heating ducting that is controlled from the control panel in the roof of the living section of the camper. Once the battens were glued down, I used a bubble wrap vapour barrier that I bought from Aldi for £10. This might not be super efficient for insulation, but with some mastic to cover any holes in the base, the metal foil tape for joins, I hope it will reduce any moisture coming up from the bottom of the van. On top of this, I plan to fit 25mm Kingspan insulation. However, due to some random ridges in the base, I think I really needed 23mm. So I gave up on that idea and swapped it for some layers of laminate foam underlay. Once the insulation was down, I cut out cardboard boxes to the shape of the edges of the van interior, around the wheel arches for example. With these fitting well, I used them as a template on some 12mm hardwood ply from Wix. Cutting with a simple jigsaw, a few tweaks and I was happy with the fit. I brought two sections of ply into the house as it started to rain. I turned them upside down and joined them together with metal plates. This ensured the height of the two boards always matched as we screwed them down. Before screwing the plywood floor into the van, I used the plywood cutout as a template for some heavy duty 2mm vinyl flooring. I felt it was worth fitting hard wearing flooring as I didn't want the rock and roll bed runners to cause a tear over a number of years and I wouldn't want to worry about wearing shoes or wellies in the van. One tip that saved me loads of time was to photograph the floor with the, before the ply was put down. Putting a measuring tape down beforehand meant that I could tell precisely where all the battens were for screwing into without missing. Next, I laid the vinyl in place, folding half back and spraying vinyl adhesive on half at a time, using a towel to ensure there was no bubbles. I was advised to use a trowel and some special adhesive, but it seemed much harder than using a spray. I hope it doesn't pick up and it sticks okay. Only time will tell. The last job of the day was to cut and screw down some 15 by 15 mm anodized aluminium 90 degree extrusion from Wix. I planned to edge the rear and front of the board where they would eventually transition to the original carpet in the van as well as along the edge where we'll be getting in and out of the van. Next on the list is a rock and roll bed being fitted. In the i800 I've had to have this custom made for a lower ceiling. The top of the seat covers 
should be 35 centimeters above the floor, which matches the old seats we took out. This is some 10 centimeters lower than the standard rock and roll beds that are made for VW transporters, which appear to be higher, especially with the pop tops. I don't plan on adding a pop top to this campground conversion. Future episodes will include fitting a swivel base, the electrics I'm planning on using, and how about a plan to build the cabinets. So subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out. As always, please ask any questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.